morning. Thank you for coming to my talk. Um, my name is Patrick Altman, VP of Engineering at Eldarian and core developer on the Pinax project. Well, there we go. Um, so there's currently over 60 open source projects in the Pinax ecosystem. And this morning I'd like to discuss how we've added extensibility to many of them. And I cannot figure out how to make these advance. I guess it's going to do it its own song. So why should you care about extensibility? Number one, it's the foundation of reusability. When we're writing Django apps, we want them to be reusable. Second, we have a chance to delight our users. We've all experienced this. I know at least I have. Um, Django is a great example of this, whether it's extending the admin, using class-based views, or custom use, you know, using a custom user model. And lastly, we have a chance to make the world a better place. I know it's a pretty grandiose statement, but really, if we reduce the need to reinvent the wheel, we increase the time and cognitive capacity that is available to spend working on new and interesting problems. The community benefits and becomes more productive and even more innovative, resulting in more value creation for and in the world around us. Just how do we go about creating extensibility? There's a lot of different ways, but I want to focus just on three today. The first is, is what we call hook sets. And this is a term um, coined by, well, it's a term coined by Brian Rosner. He created uh, hook sets in Django user accounts, and it was, was driven by a, a client need where the use of signals didn't quite support the requirement, um, at least not as cleanly as we had liked. And it was simply a, it's simply a class with methods that can be overridden at the site level. Then we have class-based views. Russell Keith McGee discussed this at length on Tuesday, and they're a great way to modify and extend behavior of an app inside a site. And lastly, plugins. Plugins permit loose coupling between the plugin and consumer. They allow for rapid expansion of functionality due to the ease of writing individual plugins. And they're used mostly to extend, extend a single app or a website. They're less about reusability. So Django user accounts is probably one of Eldarian's most used apps out of Pinax. It provides a ton of functionality that we've all come to expect from web applications, things like sign up, login, email confirmation, password resetting, and more. But a lot of these rely heavily on sending emails. Up until hook sets, um, we were really only able to modify um, sorry. Up until hook sets, we were really only able to modify the, the content of the email templates and not really change how the emails were being sent. The client in this case wanted to control the content of the email through a third-party website, a uh, third-party service that he had subscribed to, and it would require us to make API calls providing the context, context for those emails. So the solution was to create a hook set method in um, hook set methods to override how the emails are being sent so we could implement this in his site. So let's take a look at some code, if I can make these advance. So the default hook set implementation that ships with Django user accounts basically just pulled out all of the uh, blocks of sending email into individual methods in this, in this object, in this class. Um, then we have the hook proxy, and we use this hook set object, the instance of the hook set proxy, to wrap the pulling of the settings. And that setting is what allows us to override the default hook set so we can create a, a hook set in our application, in our website, that allows us to override how the emails work. Um, so here in our conf module, uh, you can see we use Giannis Lydell's Django app conf for application settings. It's a fantastic way to, to encapsulate all the settings in your reusable app. Highly recommend it. Um, so 
that we ship with a uh, default hook set configured as you see here in this hook set property of the comp, main conf module. Um, but to override it, it's as simple as instant, you know, creating your own class at the, uh, and inheriting from the base hook set and um, putting it in somewhere in your site and then setting the account hook set setting in your settings.py. Here in the models of the Django, of Django, Django user accounts, um, you can see in this sign up uh, in the sign up model, we have a method called send, and there used to be a block of you know, your typical send mail uh, code here, and that was replaced with this uh, hook set uh, method to send invitation email, and that's what keeps it. That's what allows us to override how the email sent. So for the client, we ended up just making API calls and replacing the default hook set. So moving on to class-based views, we had a client with specific needs for our sign-up for the sign-up process, as well as complexity of passwords. Jeez. I really apologize by these slides, guys. Um, Anyways, the, uh, he need, the client needed support for profile creation of coupon codes right upon, upon sign up, and passwords had very specific business rules like containing certain characters and whatnot that out of the box aren't really supported by Django user accounts. So we had to extend the sign up view and override some of the forms um, to modify them to collect and process this extra data, but we didn't want to rewrite, have to rewrite the entire sign up view and the forms that dealt with the passwords, all we really needed to do was add a little bit of extra validation. Oh, I keeps going back on me. So as you can see here in the view, this is the views module of the, the project. We are pulling in the sign up view from Django user accounts, subclassing it, and then overriding just a few methods, um, two that deal with user creation and one um, that's called, it's an after sign up method that gives us access to the form. And we use that to basically take the created user, create a profile and process any coupon codes. In addition, we're pulling in the custom sign up form from, uh, that has the uh, password, the secure password mix in that, that we'll see here. And Really, all we needed to do to change these three forms that deal with that deal with uh, passwords is to create a mix-in and to encapsulate in one place the business rules that we had, that were around validating that the password was um, the password had was up to his complexity requirements and mix it in with the other three forms without really changing any of the, the forms um, themselves. Except for the sign-up form, obviously we had to add some additional fields there. Um, and we tie it all together in the URLs pie. Um, we override routes provided by, D, by Django user accounts um, for the uh, change password and password reset views. We're using the stock views, but we're pulling, we're, adding, we're overriding them here so we can use the, the forms that we overrode. And then of course using our custom sign up view. And now onto plugins. So Eldarian has a site that's really in early development, KPI Tree. It's a tool for teams to track metrics, scorecards, and key performance indicators. Core to this app is collecting metrics. Some of this is some of this will be manual, and there's a lot of metrics. Um, you know, some of this is manual, like you know, we'll, we'll come to the site and fill out a form or respond to an email. But there's a lot of metrics that are generated from systems, and so it makes sense to automate the collection of those. Um, geez. I'm about to throw my computer across the room. Um, 
So yeah, so for the automated metrics, um, we wanted a way to easily write the open source apps uh, project. Jeez. There's my rehearsal from last night. Funny enough, when you're rehearsing this, it doesn't automatically advance like this. OK. Um, I believe I was talking about the automation. So we needed a way to easily write integrations for the automated collections. Um, we'll, we'll likely end up writing a bulk of these, but we wanted to expose the ability for anyone to contribute and add to them. We're going to open source this package um, so people can submit their own. And you know, to encourage this, we need it to be dead simple. Um, this is nothing new. You know, sites like Git Sentry offer this. Um, GitHub, you can send pull requests of you know and extend a plugin. Um, and the idea is, you should only have to implement a single class to conform and conform to an API, and not have to worry about any of the internals of the host system. Um, so there's really just two parts here that are, that make this plugin system work. Um, the first is. Uh, the first is the registry, which is really just a, um, a small wrapper around a dictionary. And you can see here we create a, an instance and then delete it to create a singleton. And the important point, of ref, uh, point, the important point here is um, this registry object is a single point of interface between the, the internals of the website and the plugin system. And uh, the second half of this base.py module that's implementing this whole plugin system are, is a base plugin class. In some languages it would be an abstract base class, but um, important to note here, you can see it has this thing called a meta class, um, which is this the, the registrable class at the top. And the really cool thing about this is any definition of a, any def definition of a new plugin will automatically register itself. It's one less thing to uh, worry about in configuration on, on our side or for the plugin developer to have to get right. Um, so here's an example of a plugin that I wrote for, um, for our use. Um, we use it to integrate with user voice specifically to pull in support metrics from Gondor. Um, so this is about all there is to implementing a plugin. Um, obviously, I've cut out the implementation details because they're not important, and the slide's only so big. But um, the idea is you just implement the, these methods to interact with, in this case, user voice API, and not have to worry about the internals of how it's consumed. Um, so here's an example of how it's being consumed internally. Um, this is a models module of one of our internal apps in, in the project. The auto collection is um, simply a model with, that the user will create an instance of. And as such, we'll select a provider, in this case, like user voice. Um, the choices are populated from the registry. There's a method on there that will group all the choices together. Um, and the inputs. Are, are the user input that the plugin needs to execute, whether it's OAuth tokens or, or whatever, and the plugin developer is responsible for telling it what it needs. Um, and this, it will actually validate against the plugin's inputs method to make sure that all the required inputs are there. And then, um, and I cut a lot of code out here for brevity, but in the process method, we're going to call and fetch the data. and then create metrics internally. And the beautiful thing about this is the plugin develop, excuse me, the plugin developer doesn't have to know how this is being consumed, and KPI tree doesn't have to know what plugin it's talking about. It's a very clean separation. 
And earlier I mentioned when about the meta class and how that works and uh, things get registered automatically when things are defined and imported. Well, to import them, um, we have we use a startup.py module in all of our projects. That's going to quickly change now with Django 1.7. But for the past two years, we've wanted to organize all of our startup code in one place and not have to do things like import things into URLs pi relying on the fact that Django auto loads that. So in all of our projects we have at least this run method and the auto load method to run the auto discover for the admin and to load all of our receivers modules where we store things like signal handlers. Um, instead of putting signal handlers inside models we put them in our receivers pi to keep that all organized well. So for the KPI tree project, we added this function called loop submodules, and all it's going to do is loop over this KPI tree integrations package and import all of its modules. In our case, they are plugins, and that's what. And then when that happens, they get auto registered. So in order for this run method to execute, we have to modify the two entry points to our application, and that's the WSGI module. As you can see here, we. Imp import KPI tree startup and call startup run. We do the same thing in the manage.py. So as of Tuesday, we've had over 5,000 stargazers on across those 60 uh, Pinex projects. And for the ones that are packaged, um, for example, we have startup project, starter project templates. Um, but the, for the ones that are packaged, over a million, close to a million downloads. And I say this because, you know, with hook sets, class-based views, and plugins, it's helped Eldarian make apps more extensible. And in doing so, we've seen greater re re reuse. And as evidenced by these stars and downloads, I, I like to think that we're delighting our users, um, at least some of them. Um, and after three plus years of working at Eldarian, I can honestly attest that our immediate world has gotten better both for us and our clients, because I've seen that we're, we are building more things and we're building them faster, lots faster than where we were three years ago, um, both for ourselves and for our clients. So I've covered a lot here really quick. Um, this wasn't really designed to be a tutorial, but just to kind of get things, get you thinking. I'm around the rest of the afternoon. If you want to talk any more, talk any deeper about any of these things, just, just find me and let's, let's connect. So with that, are there any questions?